Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this 2025 uh, operating budget meeting. I'm going to ask if there's any uh, disclosure of your interests under the Municipal Conflicts of Interest Act. Please dispose now. Seeing none, I uh, go to a resolution moved by Deputy Mayor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Dirksen, that the town meant to convene to the committee of all to conduct budget deliberations. All in favor of motion. Carried, thank you. So we're going to move, uh, move right into this uh, budget today. I want to make everyone aware that this is a draft budget, and this is a draft board by our council, our staff. And I just got this time, I'd like to thank our staff for uh, doing this, putting uh, your thoughts on paper and putting it all together in a binder. I'm not sure who was responsible for that. I know that uh, since we did our strat plan and our dev plan and our cultural roundtable plan, cultural plan, we uh, you know we have a we have something to go by up to date. And uh, we're being led today by our newest member of our Senior Man from Team, our CAO. First time you've done the budget here in uh, Minto. We welcome you and thank you for coming here. And hopefully you've been thanked enough, but um, we might as well just get right into it. So, CAO Burton, I'll turn the chair to you. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Honorable Mayor Turton. Honorable Deputy Mayor Anderson and Honorable Members of Council. So I can thank you for your time this afternoon. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to have us as staff present to you our draft 2025 operating budget. I have the opportunity and the pleasure to introduce the draft 2025 operating budget and to outline the budget process and some of the timelines we have. Um, and I'll, I'll then hand the presentation over to Treasurer Duff and the individual department heads to uh, take us through the rest of the presentation. Uh, please, as a point of clarity, this is a preliminary or draft operating budget. Uh, this is mostly an information and dialogue meeting with the hopes that members of council can give their feedback and direction, which will then take, which we will then take back to uh, to make amendments and updates and bring you back at a later time. Um, there is no request of council to adopt the budget today. So just to keep clear. So the slide we have in front of you is the title of the budget 2025. The theme is of plans into action. And we thought that was appropriate. Uh, we had a collaborative discussion on that actually, um, because we had done so much planning in 2024. Uh, the strategic plan, the economic development plan, the cultural plan, uh, we have the, the update to the county official plan, uh, the asset management plan, uh, having our water and wastewater financial plans that are in the works. We have a fire master plan, which is also in the works. And then we have the re re recreation plan, which will be coming to you uh, this month. Um, so the 2025 operating budget is one that we are going to implement the plans that we have uh, put forward today. The schedule, uh, so day one, which is today, November the 5th, uh, we've had the kind introduction from the mayor, and we'll be presenting the operating budget presentation and we'll having a discussion between yourselves and, uh, and staff. On day two, which is uh, Tuesday, November the 26th, um, same kind of process, we'll bring back the operating budget with all the amendments and feedback that the council has provided. And then we'll also present to you the capital budget and have the opportunity for members of council to uh, look at, discuss, and give us feedback on. Once those amendments are completed, they'll be completed before December the 3rd and December the 3rd after our council meeting. At 5 p.m., we'll be having an open house for the public to come and uh, ask questions and uh, participate in that process if they so choose. So council discusses as committee of the whole each of the budget items and provides direction to approve, modify, or disable certain elements. 
Uh, the department heads again, the managers are here to provide support to that discussion. Uh, again, the open house is December the 3rd uh, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. here in the chambers. Um, the Treasury Department and the department heads will bring back finalized budget in permanent finance, financial form. And we're hoping on December the 17th to ask council to pass a budget bylaw allowing us to, uh, to move forward in 2025. And this, this is important because it gives us as staff an opportunity to have a fresh start as of January 1st. And uh, given some of my past experiences, that's very welcoming <laughs> because uh, it can get quite uh, complicated when you get too far into the next budget here. Again, the guiding documents that we're using in the strategic plan 2024, the updated uh, official plan for Wellington County, economic development plan, cultural plan, our asset management plan, the various financial plans, fire master plan to come, and the recreation plan to come. We are also going to be in the process shortly after we get the budget completed to uh, make sure that our staff work plans are in place for 2025. Make sure that we're completing everything that we said we would. Of course, the vision statement, which Council approved back in the spring of 2024, part of the strategic plan, the vision statement is a progressive rural community where all people are welcome. And the five main goals or pillars for manager infrastructure, quality of life, strong, vibrant economy inclusive community and responsible government. And you'll see in your documents that we've tried to attach these pillars to each of those uh, budgetary line items or to the um, department of things um, that we're talking about. So I'll hand this over to uh, Treasurer Duff and uh, we'll continue. Great, uh, <clears throat> thank you for your um, I'm just going to stay here because I got a lot of papers. I'll probably drop them on the <laughs> I'll be comfort. Uh, so I'm going to highlight the overall picture. This would be an executive uh, summary. So you have a, a comparison with the uh, 24 budget and the 25 requests. Um, I'm going to go through each department in, in detail. Uh, but just from a, a high level, um, we're looking at uh, before any uh, assessment of growth changes, uh, an increase of 8.53%. Um, we're uh, trying to make an anticipation of the mental share of growth. And basically, the impact is about 18 to 24 months behind. So even though building has slowed down a bit, uh, in 2025, we'll still be reaping some of the busy activity in 22 and 23. So we've uh, hit the figure of 106,000, which moderates the increase down to 6.5%. And uh, we will be looking for direction at the end of this meeting to see how this council feel about that, because uh, a lot of it is accomplish through transfers to and from reserves and uh, we can modify that to your up or down. Um, so we'll track the next slide is yeah, not very interesting, but <laughs> anyway, uh, it's here just to emphasize water and wastewater. What is your way for it? Okay. Um, the water and wastewater are not funded by taxes. And this budget document is primarily focused on taxes. So that's why we have our zeros and you'll see how we get to zero uh, when we get to those departments. They are uh, cost recovery basis. And uh, again, any surplus we have to go back to the related reserves. Kind of the, the main uh, budget movers uh, this year. So just for perspective, uh, for 24, the overall tax levy for the intro was 6,089,699. So 1% of that is just under 64,000. Um, in this budget, we're looking at uh, a few drivers. 
Uh, one would be the, uh, the COLA, which is off of the 4%. Uh, benefits are up, I'd say, a little more modestly this year. That's covered by uh, the owner's rules or pension rules and our benefit carrier. Insurance premiums are a bit more relatively good news. We've had a, a few years of double digit increases. And I think in uh, insurance parlance, the hard market is beginning to soften, so it means a little more uh, competition and uh, less aggressive growth picture. Uh, also, heat and hydro, very, very hard to forecast. Um, but increases are anticipated to be relatively modest. And of course, we're always trying to take some energy conservation measures to offset that. IT, we've done uh, a lot of work and upgrades in the last two years, and uh, I think we're in more of a maintenance and uh, minor replacement phase, but it's going the right way. Uh, vehicle repairs, we seem to be uh, having a lot of issues with our, our aging fleet, so that's going up. And then there's a lot of other smaller items that uh, contribute to the overall, so. Again, we have the 415375 figure, and again, the 6.5% uh, overall. Um, we always try to take a, a high level look at the environment that Minto works in, even though we're a small part of the, the world and the, and the nation, we are influenced by it. Um, it's interesting to see that uh, unemployment rates in general are, they're, they're trending upwards. Or, being stubbornly high. Um, Canada, we've gone from 5.5% last year to about 6.6% uh, .6 this year. Um, happily, and you'll see some of the countries have really low unemployment. They have a real aging demographic problem, so they don't have a big workforce, uh, thinking of uh, Germany and Japan in particular. Now, locally, uh, we were very close to the national average a year ago. We were at 5.6, and we have updated figures. We're still at 5.6, and we recall the country as a whole went up to 6.6. So, again, we have a relatively tight labor market. So, um, the, the need for workers is still here, even though there's a bit more uh, slack in, in the market. Um, GDP, the world, uh, I, I think through the interest rates, and this is partly by design, is certainly had a slowdown. Um, growth as a whole has been falling, is much more modest. Uh, hardly anybody over 2%, 2% is a big figure. Uh, even China at 4.2, that's the biggest, but compared to their history, it's quite low. And of course, we know there's global risk of increasing tariffs and protectionism and world conflict, which will certainly uh, contribute to a slowdown. Um, getting back to the, the COLA, so then we all know um, inflation in, in Canada and the world in general has been quite volatile. So this is a new slide that uh, we put together just showing the September CPIs, which our policy is to look at the previous year and uh, have that for our COLA. And that worked out really well for several years until um, the 23 budget, when we referred back to 22, and we had 6.9% in place. So uh, council and, and staff agreed that what we would do would cap it at four percent and then do a carry forward so we carried forward 2.9 percent um last year the relative figure for 23 was 3.7 so we took uh, 0.3 of that 2.9 and again capped it at four this year September inflation has fallen quite a bit so this uh, particular document anticipates using 2.4 of the 2.6 percent remaining carry forward, and again, tack tacking at four, that's basically what we just carry forward times it's two. Yeah, and some not so great news 
Provincial deficits have just exploded over the last year, uh, especially in the larger provinces of, of BC, Ontario, and Quebec. Um, that's going to put a lot of pressure on provincial budget. Uh, their debt servicing, I'm sure, will go up. They'll, they'll be um, very glad to hear a falling interest rate, but uh, it may be hard to get funding from provinces. That they wrestle uh, with their balance sheet issues. Um, another kind of new slide interest rates really influence uh, a lot of our activity with the FCR building department. Um, so you can see the effects of COVID, the general slowdown. Uh, in March of 20, interest rates were, were almost at 0.25%. And they've been ratcheting up as the economy gains strength until we hit a peak of 5% in July of 23. And uh, especially in the summer and fall, the Bank of Canada started to um, <clears throat> loosen the strings a bit, and we're now at 3.75%. And I think that trend will continue to fall. I don't think we're going anywhere near zero again, but hopefully we can get into uh, you know, two to three percent range. So like that. Um, the organization structure again relatively unchanged from the previous years. Um, Seth will have a, a couple of changes, and that will be noted on the next slide. Okay, so, a big change is in fire and emergency services. And as we know, Minto is uh, one of the partners of the joint agreement with Wellington North in Mapleton. However, all the employees are on the payroll of the town of Minto, and then we're compensated by the other uh, partners. And uh, we did some work as uh, I know the deputy mayor is very <laughs> interested in trying to determine what is our full time equivalent for all part time workers. So, our methodology, and that, that was uh, Lori and, and Tanya, we looked at the total hours worked by all the part time people. So, that we are our day camps, our pool staff, our part time flower operators, and, and everyone like that. Took the total number of hours and divided by a 35 hour work week, and we came up with 13 FTEs. So, that would give us an equivalent of 67 and a half employees at TE, um, and that's uh, combined full time, part time. And some of our, our plans, uh, the asset management plan, as you know, we're uh, hoping near the, the end of the journey of uh, the last batch of regulations under 5817. Our latest asset management plan was approved by council this past June. That includes all of our asset classes and financing for current levels of service. Uh, the updated replacement costs are roughly $6 million a year, and this is just to maintain existing assets, nothing for growth. And the current replacement value, according to that study, was $384 million. Um, our next deadline will be July 1st, 25, when we have to look at proposed levels of services. So um, we'll be getting to work on that study very shortly. Again, amazingly, the percentages between the town, the county, and Minto are exactly the same as they were a year ago for 24. So 23 and 24, exactly the same. So for every uh, $100 in tax, the town gets 37.30. Education has continued to fall as a percentage, but the same as uh, 23 for 24, 15.4%. And the county 47.3, and again a one percent uh, increase for the town is about 64,000. And then you can see the distribution of the tax room again, not including water and wastewater uh, between all the various departments. And that's summarized in the uh, pie chart. Um, again, uh, our state administration, public works, community services. And fire and emergency that uh, three quarters of all that we spend. Uh, a little bit less. 
The next slide is an update. So when we printed this um, barely a week ago, we had no idea what the uh, ONPF, which has been carrying this whole heart and sick fund allocation. So we just put a placeholder of exactly the same as uh, 24. However, uh, the next day, we got uh, all the financial allocations announced, and for 2025, we'll be at a million five twenty one five hundred, uh, which is an increase of forty seven nine. So this slide compares two major grants that do not require any application. They're not um, based on competitive applications. They're based upon formulas, and it may be how rural we are. Average household income, long term fill grade, things like that. So the overall increase in both of these grants will now be 245.134. The OMPF has generally been used for operating purposes and the OCIF for capital purchases. So the OCIF will not be reflected in this document. You'll see it when we get to the capital budget. And, and this is uh, tax support reserve contributions, and I'm sure after today it will be increasing or decreasing. But, but that's the money, and it's not reflected of uh, yeah. go. So that's kind of our general high level. So we talk really in five minutes. Very often, I'm uh, but I'm going to do the, the first set of both as finance and then uh, give it back to Greg for the other ones. So for finance, we've you know, accomplished a lot of our things for the year before, but there are some things that I would like to look at. Um, budget software, uh, I give a lot of credit to uh, Tanya and Jackie, especially, and supported by Murray and Jane. Um, the present software that we're using to prepare this document is basically a collection of many, many Excel spreadsheets. Uh, we 114 just for operating. So it's working. Uh, I wouldn't call it robust. If you make any changes, it's a lot of work. Um, so we're going we're gonna to see what's out there. Um, we may do nothing better, um, but I do want to have a look at it. Uh, as I mentioned, we have to look at the proposed levels of service for all our departments, and uh, that requires another asset management plan by July 1st, 2025. Um, we're coming up to the audit for the June 30th, 24 year end for the Mental Municipal Services Corporation, which is basically our medical center and the operations of the Thomas and Grove. Um, I think things are working better, stabilized, and uh, if we have any excess cash, we will uh, hopefully look at paying down some of the uh, debt that was incurred back in 2015, 16, when we did a lot of upgrades to the, uh, the older uh, Harrison Medical Center building. Uh, the uh, CPA Institute continues to work on new regulations, so I know there's gonna be something covering financial um, instruments this year, uh, just like we had in 23 for the asset retirement obligations. Uh, I do want to review the accounting software options out there. Um, we've been using ours for a long time. It's a small company that got bought out by a large company. And uh, again, it serves our purposes, but they're if you recall, we use some of the municipal modernization funding to uh, review the market. Um, there's nothing as economical as what we have now, so it will probably require a major investment if we do decide to change. Uh, happily, I think that cross trading is, is going very well, and you know, we're uh, a small amount of people, but uh, the more we know each other, the jobs are better. Um, Another one that's not going to be a lot of uh, work, but um, lower tiers of county of wealth, and will be uh, administrators of a new program. It's an energy initiative by the county of wealth called the 
Home and Energy Efficiency Transition Program, or HEAT for short. I'll be looking for a 2026 implementation, and basically it's low interest loans to homeowners uh, to upgrade and make energy and conservation investments. And speaking of investments in this declining interest rate uh, environment, we have been biasing for getting guaranteed investment certificates and uh, we have to see if that correct strategy. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Greg. Thank you, Judge Ruger. Uh, for the 2025 goals and objectives for the CAO department, uh, which includes the clerk's department and human resources, uh, we're looking at, of course, the strategic plan, departmental plan, uh, work plans, uh, human resources policy review and update, um, begin preparation for the 2026 uh, municipal election, which is not that far away, uh, procedural bylaw review and potential amendments, uh, ongoing bylaw and policy reviews, there's a number of them that need to be uh, looked at. Uh, we've also, based on strategic uh, plan item 5.4, uh, council approved the review wage compensation. And so I'd like to do that in uh, 2045. So that's a pay equity and a wage review. Um, and just to be transparent, so it's, that's the $15,000 that you see in uh, in our administration budget that the increase and uh, employee for, uh, further employee recruitment marketing and branding study and review you go to the administration summary under um, mayor and council uh, there's an increase of five thousand dollars or 2.4 percent essentially it's cost of living uh, updates there um, uh, meetings and conferences and all that sort of thing. have an increase certainly in the new year. Under CAO and clerks, there's a significant increase there, um, 8.3% or $55,000. Um, the cost of living for staff, uh, other expenditures, which include conferences and meetings, training, consulting services, which includes that $15,000 for the wage review, uh, memberships and computer software, uh, we will see a revenue decline in wedding ceremonies, unfortunately. Um, not sure what the trend there is. Um, but I've also, uh, or we have also included an increase in legal services based on our 2024 year. Um, the elections, there's an increase there of $4,000. Again, we're preparing ourselves to. Uh, for the 2026 election, and uh, we need to bump up our reserves and our funds so that we are prepared and not have to go to the taxpayer and further for helping supply that, uh, that service to the community. And then, of course, the reserves increase of $4,000 uh, for the commission. That's it for me. Great. Um, so finance includes finance department and then other things that don't fit anywhere else. So we have some place managers for um, annual salary reviews and also a, a decrease in the amount of transfers from the reserves um, to, to kind of adjust to get to that 0.5% figure. Um, so those are the, the major changes in, in finance. Other than that, there isn't really as much as it looks there. People and property, uh, that's where our conservation authority values are. And that's an interesting there. And health and social services, not much change. That's where we put our uh, contributions to such things as producer recruitment and uh, the three things. So, um, again, we're uh, a lot of moving parts in this one, but uh, we'll certainly take any questions on and then whether it's CEO clips or finance. Okay, questions for Treasury or CAO? Go ahead, uh, Dr. Anderson. Um, in regards to the health and social services, we haven't looked at any increase in light of the ongoing crisis that I keep talking about that I experience it weekly. Um, 
I wonder if we need to look at something like that uh, as far as office space, which we haven't talked about with community services, because it's basically the only way you'll get positions. And that problem is becoming ever larger and bogging down the hospital system because people come because they have nowhere else to get health care. So they constantly go up to the emergency department. And I think the only way we can look at that for our community is for us to provide that the solution that's being proposed across the province amongst the healthcare providers is that there are community clinics that are supported by the municipality as much as it shouldn't be because that should be a provincial responsibility but it's the only way you can maintain any kind of hope of having a healthcare system where people have access to a healthcare provider within a reasonable time frame so i i don't know it, it, it shouldn't really be our purview but i'm afraid it's going to happen so I guess there are two thoughts on that. So the town indirectly by providing space to the family health team right. has contributed to that. Um, I, again, neither Ninto nor the corporation had the money, so we were at the 550 and you know the whole service with the midwives and family right. health team. So we have done that. Um, we also we, we could consider what you're saying is like something over and above. Um, I believe that uh, the exact director of the family health team has indicated uh, some success in, in that department, right. and I expect they will present their ten thousand dollar request as usual. But we usually have her, I think, in uh, January or February. So again, we could consider making an amendment for that for that purpose. But uh, I agree with you say not our job, but to, yeah. Right. Entire it's not, but I think we sort of have to look at it. And other communities are, and there have been some good success stories. I believe Delphi was an example, and they built the building, they run it, they operate it, they managed to recruit six new positions for the community by operating it that way. They collect funds from OHIP or whatever the paying source, they pay the physicians a salary. So they make enough to actually operate it, but it's a whole other facet that we would have to take on. I don't know that we have an appetite for that, but in the interest of the health of our community, I don't think that we're gonna have a lot of choice if we wanna be forward thinking and proactive for our, for our community. So just something to think about. That's really good. Um, I appreciate what you're saying, Councilor Anderson, but over the years I, I found when the government gives us less and less, the provincial government gives us less and less towards healthcare, um, and we get more, and when they get less, we get more, and then they get less. So the more we compensate, the less they get. I mean, I've often seen that. that one time we just provided bricks and mortar and now we're more into helping to make sure the help moves along but i that's my concern is it's great that we come forward but then the the local taxpayers be paying for it and be less than the provincial government that's all and i don't disagree with you at all it is a conundrum and it is isn't the way it should be but i don't know that there's a lot of choice for our people to have health service available for them in our community. When does it become our job? It shouldn't be our job. But as we look at the provincial deficits, I don't think they're going to step forward much to the plate because they don't have the wherewithal to do it. So it depends on our, we need to assess it, weigh it, and how important is that to us, but it's vitally important to our community. And if I could, I think I'd wait, wait for the ask what you offer. So if they can be fine, I'm sure they're okay with it. I wait for the ask. Sure. Thanks. I think it's important to note that this uh, this town, our, our community, has, has done a lot for uh, healthcare here. And I mean, are we there? Um, we're very fortunate to have our uh, MPP, Mr. Ray, put forward uh, money for a couple of nurse practitioners. That, that has been very positive, and I know that our community is very giving to do with the MRI. But uh, I know from another community that has put a little money forward from the municipality 
for a uh, nurse practitioner, but I don't know. It's a questionable thing. And then the more we talk to our MD and our and our the better about this. Go ahead. Any other questions for our team? Go ahead. Uh, um, I am going to continue on to a different department because uh, our economic development officer is uh, lobbying at Queen's Park as we speak <laughs> and uh, building a nice new set. So uh, we'll go over uh, her operating budget. Um, so her goals and objectives for 2025 uh, are basically related to two plans because we know we did our strategic plan, but uh, there's two other sub plans that we recently adopted, the economic development plan and the culture plan, and they fall a lot within this department. So uh, continued business retention, expansion and investment attraction, uh, perhaps in a different way, maybe not through the provision of industrial land so much, but through other things such as the uh, the move to NISO program, uh, continue to foster good relationships with our Chamber of Commerce and support small business and entrepreneurship. Um, and uh, I know there's a big uh, question with uh, the home entrepreneurs that you come about. Uh, provide a welcoming community. Uh, again, our unemployment rate of 5.6, while well, not uh, extremely low, which it was, we still need to attract the workforce uh, hand in hand with attracting uh, businesses. Marketing and communication, again, marketing to our residents and marketing to our visitors, and also have uh, possible uh, new residents and businesses. And uh, again, one of the outposts of the culture plan was building Minto as a cultural destination. Uh, doing things like our, our recent partnership with uh, Anover and like the North for the Culture Bus, and uh, maybe improving our, our street shapes and, and continuing on that, that design. Uh, so, again, her, her uh, budget is, is relatively modest in terms of changes. Uh, I guess I should highlight that something that I, I know she's already brought forward is the uh, upcoming move of our launch uh, site from uh, the current building at the, uh, the corner of the Warren Arthur Streets to uh, the main floor of the old post. So that will actually save us a bit of money and I think also uh, raise our visibility. Um, another initiative is to better align the Minto uh, Community Improvement Plan with the County Wellington Improvement Plan. Uh, I gather quite a few of the lower tiers are going to be working on this. Uh, some of the rules are different, some of the criteria, and it would be good if we could raise that. And uh, so we have an overall, uh, I guess, business structural improvement uh, allocation of 50,000, but we're going to reduce that to 35 for this year and contribute $15,000 to the study to apply those plans. Um, everything else is the same. Uh, part of the uh, review of our economic development department that's perhaps to do fewer events and concentrate on other high value activities. So, uh, again, the, uh, the financial changes are relatively modest in, in this department. I will try to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions on the uh, Economic and community development. Uh, okay. Seeing none, George. Uh, thank you. That's me for now. I mean, thank you for building. Barry's next. Perfect. Um, thank you very much. Um, so, my goals and objectives are um, may seem that I'm not doing anything, our carries over from uh, 2024. Um, what we've seen with multiple changes in the Planning Act, um, some of the applications and processes that we've developed, we had to modify only to get them reversed again. Um, so it's kind of a back and forth, uh, back and forth item. Um, another item that I'm anticipating should actually come into effect this year is the administrative penalty system. 
uh, for building code act um, offenses. Um, once that's implemented or, or given the green light by the province, then there's a series of framework that we need to uh, to establish. So that is one of my missions, um, as well as the 2756 changes coming into the building code come uh, March. Um, so with respect to my budget numbers, um, in addition to the permit fee increase that was recently approved coming into effect uh, 1st of January, um, as well as the realignment of the development uh, technician position, um, being that he's now appointed as Minto's drainage super, um, my um, uh, budget amount actually has been decreased by about 9.1% over 2024. Um, with the ask of 346,000, which is a reduction of just a little under um, 35,000. So I'm happy to take any questions if you may have them. Questions for Gary? Two questions, Gary, on the training. Um, <laughs> I know that uh, you've kind of been promised training on the building code and other items, planning act. So, sir? Uh, so it has in both regards. Um, so actually next week, uh, I'm going to be attending a session on the changes to the provincial policy statement. Um, so that was released a couple of months ago. Um, and the last two weeks, I mean, across the entire province, uh, doing training on building code, the building code changes. So. Um, yeah, there's plenty of opportunities more on the building side of things than the planning, but it's definitely more than what has ever been offered before, which is which is pleasant. Uh, I would like to think that that comes part and parcel with uh, you and your colleagues uh, asking. I'm sure you've asked before, but in this particular case, with all the changes, it's more important than ever. I mean, interpretation is everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with the training that we did, or I did help with the last couple of weeks, we put through about 654, 684, sorry, building officials, contractors, and designers um, through it. Yeah, things worth the training. So it was definitely getting the message out there. So is that all face-to-face, -face or is there a lot of teams and, and uh, Zoom? That was all face to face. Um, the changes to or the training on the changes of the provincial policy statement are both. Um, I believe uh, this Friday there's an uh, in person session in London, uh, but I'm attending a virtual session on uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not sure. Next week. Questions for Jerry. Go ahead, Council Pondovitz. Yeah, well, next we go there. Uh, very. Um, just a question: are, are the local chapters like are they thinking of putting together some training or opportunities for our own contractors or designers? Uh, that's plan. So, short answer: I can only speak for our local area, and we are. Um, I believe on December fourth, we're having a training session in uh, Six Side and Mile Main uh, on the Part Nine, so the housing changes as well as the farm building code changes. Um, I have been talking with my staff about doing one locally here for our contractors, so uh, we may be doing that. Um, in addition to that, um, all the 900 some odd slides that were presented at our training session last week are available, uh, will be available to our members as well as a recording of it. So even if we can't do one locally or, or in a chapter doesn't want to do one locally, it's uh, available to all of our all of our members and the persons who attended um, those those training sessions. I think it's very important to do that because uh, I mean, if the contractors are aware of all these changes, it makes their job a lot easier when we're going to enforce these things. And yeah. not make the rip drywall off or whatever because they were aware of the home change. Yeah, yeah and we, we've done that. We partnered up with local municipalities to host that with previous significant changes because it's easier to teach a whole room full of people once opposed to every single job site you're teaching the same thing over and over again. So good job. Thanks. Thanks, sir. We're going to have along here. Fire and emergency service. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
Yeah, this is our, our big goal for this 2025 is to continue aligning the partnership. Um, there was a big task this year. We tried to align the three budgets that they were all similar in nature and similar in categories and making sure that they were similar in what we're budgeting for each municipality. So that will continue in 2025. Obviously, starting in April, we still have full year of data, which makes it really difficult in a full year of financial figures. So it's really hard to, to nail it down on what everything is. So we're still working on that. Um, we want to create a stabilized recruitment and retention program so we can have a consistent uh, recruitment process and consistent uh, retention program that we can make sure we retain who we recruit because it's a big thing. Losing firefighters, it takes a lot of money now and a lot of time to train them. So we want to try and do that. Um, we need to update our 25 year truck plan. We do have some older apparatus. Um, our air station has two trucks that are 20 years old this year. We're stretching them to 25 years, um, but that means they're both going to do at the same time. And the lesser of the two is, is about $1.4 million to replace one truck. So um, we need to do that and look at what we can do with the partnership and what we can do to align trucks and that stuff around the partnership. So that's a huge undertaking that we want to look at this year. Um, and the same thing with new equipment. Um, as you saw, when we bought the breathing apparatus this year, it's, it was half a million dollars. Equipment cost for fire and emergency services seems to keep going through the roof. So we want to make sure that we're doing that. Um, we are in the middle of updating the master fire plan for Minto. We've had two iterations before, 2012 and 2018, um, which we have rolled in house and we're doing the same thing this time. Um, we have talked to the CAO and we'd like to do probably in the new year, a uh, council workshop, um, where we're bringing a new presentation on setting level of service and how that works for the municipality and then get your input onto what we want to see in the master fire plan so we can come back and hopefully uh, the spring with the new iteration for a master fire plan. So um, that's key for us. It will align with the one that we're writing for Wellington North as well, and then the redoing of the one in Mapleton to make sure all three are aligned and we're all moving forward together. Um, and then we want to look at revamping our wellness program. It used to be called our critical needs of stress program, but we want to rebrand it as a wellness program because we need to start putting a lot more money and time and effort in um, wellness and prevention programs specifically. Uh, the data we got at a meeting that I was at uh, last year, the provincial government paid a half a billion dollars in firefighter cancer claims. And so far, the PTSD claims are tracking at three to one compared to cancer claims. We have three PTSD claims are a cancer claim. So I'm not very good at math, but that's a lot of money. So um, the government's really pushing, and, and we are too. We don't need them to tell us that we need to put a lot more emphasis and time into prevention. So we want to revamp a couple of the wellness programs compensate for everything and it helps us as well with our retention program. So those are our main goals this year. Um, and then we're gonna try. So as you can see there's not applicable on some of the budgets because we don't have figures for fire management and the fire vehicles. So the fire vehicles is just the management team vehicles. We separated them out um, with the fire management so that'll be easier for Tanya and Gordon to be coming at the end of the year or probably through the year being send bills to the other two municipalities we'll partner with where we where the figures are that we don't have to go diving into the budget and pull out certain invoices and that. So that's why you see that there. Um, that's why it's split out. Um, otherwise, it's just a modest increase to three point two, but that has to do a lot with uh, we've increased the wages because we've noticed a trend that the because we're busier with our three stations that the wages are are going over budget every year. Um, so we've realized that and repairs for our vehicles are getting to be increased with 20 year old trucks. You can imagine what they are and, and repairs to specifically our aero truck are not cheap. I think one was $18,000 and another was in the $20,000 for repair. So um, they're they're just getting old and they're hard to maintain. So, um, and yeah, so just about an increase, Electric, electricity, heat, hydro, all that kind of stuff is, is what's in, what we're in that increase. Um, I don't think I need to go through every single station, um, but uh, you can see that Palmerston is, is a little bit more just simply because, again, we realized the cost, we're going over budget with their wages for a year, two years, so we've increased that um, to better reflect the three to five year trend. Um, other than that, I think that's about it, what we've got done this year um, in our operating. 
Take any questions? Anybody have questions for Chris? questions. Hey, Farrell, a couple questions. We, we, we talked about revamping and um, enhancing the wellness program. So that's is that that's a mental thing, or is that something that's being pushed all over the province? When you said we, uh, I uh, can we clarify we? Um, when I say we, just us, the through the partnership with uh, a lot. Um, I, I don't know what other fire departments are doing. A lot are slow to uptake some of the ideas, but um, we're always keeping an eye on what other departments are doing across Canada. And uh, uh, Vancouver Fire, for example, they briefly had Vancouver Peer Support Team. They had that, but they changed their whole monitor to Vancouver Wellness, and that's what their T-shirts and golf shirts say for their team out there. So obviously, a way larger fire department, but it's just a change in thinking that we're not stigmatizing that it's peer support or. It's a SISM, it's a critical incident stress management, which is what SISM stands for. It's more just wellness. And it, so it could mean that we're responding to a firefighter that's having problems after a difficult call. But it could also mean that we're, we're doing a, a hockey game to build morale and, and build fitness and that kind of level to help with their wellness program. Like it's, it's, it's a wide variety of stuff that can go into that program. Um, but we really want to work up with the emphasis on prevention and learn and people learning what the signs are of, of not only uh, of the cancer and, and that that we have to deal with, but also of, of the PTSD and that. So when we talk about to uh, change the subject a little wages, how, how are we, uh, so I, I mean, you've got around the problems quite a bit. How are our volunteer uh, fire fighters? How's our wages? Are we, Similar to what our, our fellow municipalities are, or are we, you know, obviously we would know where are we? Um, with the comparisons that I've done, we have been on the lower side before, but we did raise them. Like it wasn't too many years ago, we were at $16 an hour, and we went to 18 and then we're at 20. Um, the, the policy we did the last time that we went through the wage parity was the firefighters get the coal increase as well, so that they're can stay with the with the times. Um, but now that we have three departments, we're, we're aligning the three, and it's easier to see what the other ones are paying and, and what we can align. So um, I'm not gonna lie, we're probably gonna have to go up a little bit just to stay in the, the market that the other ones are paying. Um, but we're always looking at different things. There is on the horizon too that um, we're keeping an eye on how this, but you might have to class, we might have to reclassify them as part-time employees and that would qualify all of our firefighters for owners if they so choose. Um, but we're still working on that with owners and, and other fire services to see um, which way the province is going in that. But um, it's very, very difficult because there's actually two legislations that are present that contradict each other. One says you can classify as volunteers and the other legislation says they're part-time employees. So many departments that I've talked to have gone out for legal opinion and spent good money and the, the lawyers come back with, I don't know. <laughs> Because the two it depends on which legislation you're classifying them under is which way you have to go. So we're so waiting on that sort of, but that could be a bonus add in the future as well that we we, we would be doing for that. But um, yet to be determined on any of that stuff. So. so our partnership with Wellington North and Mapleton, things are going very well. You're pleased with it. I'm very pleased with it. Yeah, I'm, but I'm jaded, so I think you know. That, that you'd have to talk to the firefighters to see, but I think it's going fantastic. Um, the example that I've used, is, that I've used at other councils is the training officer position that we, we were able to hire has changed the training program significantly. Um, I was trying to do it as well as the other duties, and I, I just wasn't paying it enough attention that it needed. Now we have a dedicated person that's just doing training solely and uh, keeping track of it and, and ramping up our practices that they're they're more worthwhile and we we've already had three or four three station practices where a mental station is trained with Mapleton and the mental station is trained with Wellington North and we're combining that. So um, that alone is the value added has been significant that um, we're seeing a lot better training, a lot more organized, which is really helpful for the firefighters when they show up. We can give them two hours worth of good training. Um, that I wasn't necessarily able to get organized as much as before. Thank you, Chris. Go ahead. See you for me. I just add on to that, uh, Mayor Chairman. I have spoken to the other CEOs of the Parker 
in the partnership, and uh, they've all been glowing and glowing our entity, especially Chris and the two deputies and the additional staff. So uh, everybody's very, very intense. Great. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Elliott. I think this is more of a comment than a uh, question. I would suggest that each of the document leader, firefighters, or the people that are involved in your fire department, money is secondary to them. The first thing is to come and support the community and be supportive. And first line people, and I uh, do appreciate that and make sure we take that. So, take that. So, uh, Correct. Yeah, yeah. That, I agree that that's not their first part to be there. They they definitely don't make a living wage or even close to it. Um, but you're right. I think it is it is fair that we pay them a fair wage when they are there. Um, they are dedicating a significant amount of time away from their family, so it's it's a it's a little bit that we can do. But um, we are keeping our eye on to see how competitive we are for the game. There's no question about it. It's uh, the citizens of Minto and the surrounding areas rely on our fire service and you know, online people, and um, I don't know where we would be without, without that service. So. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. We're moving right along to you. Services, our second highest budget. Thanks, Mayor Turn. I'm going to leave with that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, fire. It's, it's, yeah. Um, we'll just quickly go over the uh, goals and objectives for 2025. So I've only got three listed, but the first one is going to contain a plethora of, of recommendations, and that's uh, the recreation plan. We're hoping to get that here in two weeks' time with uh, our consultants, and if you like what you see, we'll go from there. Another one is building condition assessments. That's something we'd like to discuss further as part of the capital budget for next year. And then a carryover from this year is just the policy and bylaw agreement review uh, specific to the Community Services Department. Moving right along, um, just with respect to the 12 categories that take up community services on that sheet there. We're not proposing any, anything major for the after school program in terms of the, the net cost. And, and the same goes for the health and safety and the growth Palmerston or the IYSN budget. Uh, with respect to IYSN for the growth, that's uh, something we contribute towards as well as the township of Mapleton. And we're equal contributors to that initiative just across from the high school in Palmerston. Uh, for the Northern Theater, the uh, change there is just an adjustment of allocation of wages and projected revenues. Uh, it's important to note the net still zero. And the goal is to send any surplus to reserves specific to the theater. For ball and soccer or parks of amenities, uh, that's just a slight increase in wages and um, a little bit less of an increase in revenues. Revenue, revenues will be up, but not quite the amount that the wages are up. Um, same with parks, just a modest increase in, in wages there. For programs and camps, uh, it's an increase in projected revenues and, and wages. That's all part-time driven. That's the, uh, the two camps that we run in the summer, as well as PA days. And uh, they've been quite successful coming out of COVID. Uh, very high levels of, of interest and registration there. For community services and men, uh, there's an increase in the insurance that's allocated to the department. Uh, one thing we're hoping to do is really beef up the increase to reserves. Um, just with you know some of the future capital projects that we might need to entertain, I think it's important that we keep uh, reserve contributions um, at, a, at a good level. Um, with respect to the Clipper Arena, that's uh, again transfer to reserves, looking to bring that back to uh, a little bit higher level for the Harrison Arena and Palmerston Arena. So, this is all covered under recreation facilities. It would be the cost of living adjustment for the full time staff 
and then a little bit more part-time staff for our major events and some of the busier nights, specifically at Palmerston, when we've got uh, quite a bit of activity going on there. It is nice to have a uh, second set of hands. For satellite facilities, it's a railway museum. I believe the grant next year from the capital. Um, so that's down a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, for the Harrison Pool and the Palmerton Pools, uh, just slight increases to the, the part-time wages for the lifeguards. And, and trails is essentially the same as, as last year, or sorry, this year. So in all, um, of the net increase, about 40% is to increase transfers to reserves. Again, we were just north of 200, it'd be nice to get a little bit higher in terms of that. So we're looking at about 230,000 if, if this budget's approved for, for next year. And there's also insurance that's, I don't think that's ever going to go down. And the other one was the, uh, we're going to try, if it works out, a vehicle lease this year, as opposed to buying that other capital. And so there's a slight increase to the community services and men line for that. Any questions? Questions from Matthew? Welcome. One question um, in reference to the rent from our uh, two current companies. When was the last time that I'm just looking for it? I made some notes and can't find my notes. But can, so I think it's 21,000. We've reached. Both of our uh, current votes, Bombers and Harrison, with the same um, contract. It's a five year contract, right? Is it five years? Sorry. Yeah. Um, the early club contracts, they're exactly the same and they're treated the same. Um, they work for a period of time and then there's a, like a carryover clause, and both parties are happy with the terms and conditions. So the main thing with the rent is it's tied to cost of living. So as cost of living goes, the rent increase goes, and that's that's covered in the bylaw agreement. Um, those will be a couple that we'd like to look at next year, uh, just because the one year with cost of living being almost seven percent, I believe their bylaw agreement gets it's capped at two. So certainly with those two agreements, we'd like to look at them next year just to make sure that that it's, it's a fair deal between you know, us and them. But you know, one of the things that we did probably eight or nine years ago was make sure that they're I I identical just because they, they operate relatively the same at uh, each facility. Well, so when you look at uh, wages, you look at hydro, you look at heat and all the other things, you know, I think it's like the time that we looked at that. So yeah. I mean, then you look at in reference to hydro, you know, compare Clipper to Palmerston and Pearson, it's, it's it's amazing, you know, when you look at back in 23, 22, hydro in uh, the Harrison Arena, I mean, we're up uh, 15 to 20%. Same thing in Palmerston, uh, which is our busiest, not quite as much in Palmerston, but it's our busiest arena. $73,000 for hydro. For six months, it's uh, it's just the cost of doing business. So, yeah, and some of these costs are pretty scary, but it's a service to our community, and that's yep. Other questions? Okay, thank you, Matt. Thank you. I wasn't picking on you, Matt, uh, when I said it was the second highest because now we have. Uh... <laughs> Any Thank you, Mary. Mayor Journey. Um, so just starting off with the goals and objectives for this year, uh, we're going to continue on with capital projects at the shovel ready for 
any opportunity to get various funding available. Um, we'll be a few other capital projects presented in the capital budget in a couple of weeks, but uh, that's the primary reason for that is uh, for trouble writing projects. Um, fleet management review, along with what uh, Matt had suggested earlier, we're looking at options as well for leasing or other sort of rental agreements for some of the larger equipment. Uh, to cut down on those, the overall capital uh, costs and overhead there. Um, main Creek is coming up here. Uh, there will be some, some minor works happening in Palmerston Main Street next year, primarily uh, utility. Uh, moves and stuff like that in preparation for the actual road re reconstruction in 2026. Um, preparation for future development lands. Uh, we're constantly in communication with the building department, um, just servicing requirements and road networks and stuff like that for uh, future development lands. And then succession planning. Uh, that's always a, a hot topic with all the departments that end this way. Uh, we do have some retirements coming up in the future here, uh, in the near future, in the next few years. So uh, that was a, a hot topic for a lot of the presidents here. Um, the first one I had was uh, cemeteries. Cemeteries is uh, a minor increase to the budget there. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind with the cemetery operation budget is it is subsidized by general taxes. Um, because we were only able to use the uh, interest on the investments from the professional care and maintenance uh, that is available. So I think last year we were sitting on about 10,000 of the overall budget for the actual interest uh, available there. Municipal drains, there's a slight adjustment there uh, just for wages, uh, just due to actual the revenue we're, we're anticipating from the deal master grant there, uh, just based on actions this year, we do project it to be a little bit uh, lower that way. Uh, roads and men. Some of the big items here are the, like our insurance, uh, principal debt repayments, and interest on those uh, payments. Transfer reserves, and then the uh, coal increases throughout, and then the increases to the safety clothing and equipment. Um, just some of the, just being out there uh, with the staff, uh, the guys could be tall bears all the way to picking up garbage in the side of the road. So the, the aesthetics out there, it's in our appearance. It's a, it's a high priority, at least for myself. Um, roads maintenance. Uh, there are some various account adjustments here. Um, this is primarily the, the gravel road resurfacing and dust suppression, uh, hard cut repairs and sweeping on and painting the sidewalk repair, <laughs> uh, replacing signs, the uh, stop lights out there, any of that electric evaluate. And then bridge maintenance, retention ponds, and storm water systems. Um, it is nice having the staff available. Uh, we do do a lot of these projects ourselves, with the exception of some of the larger stuff, like the dust pressing. We obviously don't have the equipment to do that, or even the maintenance gravel to, to haul it uh, to the locations where it's required. Um, street lights here. Uh, just a quick uh, increase to this budget. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind here is this is the last year of the real term uh, contract. I believe it's it's done in August. So in future budgets, we should actually be able to see that our uh, reserve transfer reserves go up as long as we're meeting this. We're able to keep our maintenance uh, on these items to a minimum for. Quite a number of years. Uh, trailer parks, a slight increase here, uh, just with uh, based on the resident residential tenancy act, um, we're able to increase that uh, slightly. 
vehicle cause. This really hasn't changed at all in the last year. Um, these costs and revenues produced here do show up as uh, expenses in the other various uh, budgets through the public works list here. Winter control, we took a bit of a, a hit with not having the revenue produced from the maintenance of county roads two and three. Um, however, currently we're sitting at about 50% overall for 2024. So we should be in a good place for 2024. And then depending on winter seasons, how they uh, come about is obviously gonna dictate what the actual expenses are at the end of the season there. Um, a couple of the hard costs associated to winter maintenance are just the purchase of the salt and sand and then our area contract for the connecting links. The other stuff, like our labor and uh, machine time, is quite flexible depending on the actual season there. Um, town landscape here, a uh, slight increase for uh, wages, uh, similar to the rest, uh, and minor other adjustments throughout. Um, Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate to have the crew and the team for TLC uh, to keep these green spaces and down from the four areas looking the way they could be. Um, that's for sure. Okay. And then you got Robertson Street. This is just the revenue produced for the rental of uh, for the housing of paramedics, uh, paramedic services. <laughs> uh, just a um, slight increase there. And we've got that. Questions for, uh, for Mike? Go ahead, John, for Elias. Yeah, Mike, uh, what happens if you know, I mean, we have to go, we have a soft winter, and uh, we spend half of that funds and only six million dollars? Yep. Um, what do you do with that, actually? Do you put it back in the different programs that we've got? Hopefully, it goes in the reserves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't actually witnessed a, a surplus of a winter season as long as I've been here. Um, this would be the first year, if anything, so we'll see what that looks so like. So not like Yeah, well, typically we're a couple hundred thousand over at the end of the season, just with a few of the harder winters that we have seen. Sure. But like I say, we're sitting pretty good for 2024. I'm 50%, which is January, February, March, in the April ish, and we've only got like a month and a half kind of thing. And it's a couple of real big storms. Yeah, yeah that's to say they can uh, use it up fairly quickly, that's for sure. <laughs> Other questions? Question like on the trailer park in Boston. Yeah. Is that, uh, how often do we? Have? Can you tell me a little about is it a sliding scale in reference to the rental on the properties or does it do we use the uh how does that work? Like for the actual increase of the rent, I believe we just use the like the uh resident, residential Tennessee. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, that's that's correct. Uh like we're kind of like a residential landlord, like anywhere else, subject to rent control. So uh, we usually increase by that amount, but it's it's not one where we agree and we can't just say, oh, your rent's going up 15%. <laughs> It'd be, sorry, being real quick, like, so we just follow what the annual grants and guidelines are, and they're, uh, they're treated as kind of like month to month basis, like they don't have a real term, but uh, again, they're, uh, they're very popular and we never have any trouble um, I pull out So I'm looking, thank you. Appreciate that. The uh, bridges, we have uh, 15 bridges in Minto. We're, we're uh, so, I mean, they're, they're not young. Most of them are, uh, do you see anything uh, in the distant future? So, I mean, when we say a bridge out on the, on the fifth or sixth, I think there's a bridge on the seventh, possibly. Yeah. Um, so currently, um, one that we're 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 gonna have to do some rehab work is the one in Harrison at uh, Young Street there, just by the arena to the shop. In the next couple of years, 
Um, there's three sort of in the west, southwest corner that are going to need some rehabs uh, in the next three to four years. Um, we don't really get into any replacements for roughly about 10 years right now, but we're currently looking at options. Well, uh, there might be some situations where we can actually uh, reduce the size of them. So we may be able to get away with uh, a corrugated steel pipe or even a box culvert or something a little bit less than what's currently there. So we're in good shape, but there is stuff moving. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about that today, and I think it was uh, one of our sister municipalities, our brother, and Mr. Powell, who says over 100 bridges. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the cost, yeah. they've had to close a few and yeah. put in permanent detours. Yeah. It's kind of a crazy thought, isn't it? We, we are in better shape here, that's for sure. <laughs> Just for the sheer volume of yeah. the structures that are there. Yeah. Other questions for Okay, well, thanks. Thank you. You got Mark up in double duty today, right? Yep, I'll be playing wastewater and water services. Well, I guess we'll start with wastewater. Um, got our Goals and objectives for wastewater this year. We want to start with the uh, Young Street Sewage Pump Station Rehab. Um, we got a mosquito system in there that is in, in need of updating and uh, and some pumps. One pump in there that needs to be replaced in the station, so we're hoping to get that done. Um, Harrison and Clifford Bank stabilization at the Lagoons. Um, very terrible little fair bit of this, but uh, it wouldn't have a drought uh, wind. It, Roads the edge of the lagoon and that needs to be back to address. Uh, we have our CLI ECA implementation. Um, we, we got our CLI in 2024 and then it has a uh, uh, staged implementation over time to go into the point of that. We're all going to continue on with the uh, sledge mapping at the Harrison Lagoon to keep an eye on that um, so we can. Uh, Make sure we know when the lagoon will need to be cleaned out and what the volume of it is when that needs to be done. Uh, so all that will be uh, continuing on with the uh, our existing verifier from the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so we have to rotate it, bring it back up into uh, um, operation. So we'll be able to have two operating verifiers and the plant. So with the uh, summary, it's a little tough to tell where the increases and decreases are, but uh, I just went through line by line. Uh, if we looked at our overhead, uh, the administration had, had a light increase. And then it was interesting, uh, if you uh, looked at all three communities, they all had increases in the same places. So here's the Thompson and Clifford. Uh, we had increases in insurance, hydro, uh, debt servicing, as well as uh, treatments like the chemical treatment. Uh, we use a little bit of sulfate for that. Um, yeah, that's those are basically the, the increases for the, the wastewater budget. Questions for Mark? Yeah, Mark, what year did we clean up that? That's a Thursday sludge. Yeah. What year did we do that, Lagoon? 2009. Nine. I'm sure Gordon remembers that. We went over a budget a little bit. <laughs> I think it was uh, yes, three hundred fifty thousand, and then the one point eight million in two thousand nine dollars. Yes, and and so and, and I, I think we'll all remember walking by and seeing those almost like brick all size. That like huge driver bags and probably twenty seven of them. This is so yeah, yeah. yeah. There, sure. there you are. So uh, yeah, that that was incredible. But the Mark's kind of staying on top of it, so we don't have that happen again. <laughs> a little bit of the time. Other questions for Mark? So um, 
Go ahead, Mark Range Water. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, yeah, so the goals goals for the water department uh, continue to uh, secure sources of water for uh, new wells, plumbers, so then air stills. That was the time going with uh, lots of work with the engineers and uh, getting approvals. Uh, we'd like, like to finalize the financial plan. The financial plan and the rate study needs to be completed in 2025. So water systems uh, license renewal is up in 2025, and uh, part of the financial plan is part of that. Um, work on an allocations bylaw and updating the servicing strategy. Uh, just to keep, uh, keep a, a good handle on our reserves and uh, so we don't run out of uh, allocation. And then ongoing uh, SCADA and SCADA upgrades and maintenance. There's a number of PLCs in the uh, water SCADA system that are no longer stored. So uh, they're being replaced a couple of the year, a couple every year. Uh, and then the Harrison water tower uh, interior maintenance, uh, touch ups for ice damage and uh, Potentially adding some infrastructure to keep the water circulated up there. Both the goals for 2025. And uh, yeah, similarly, the uh, summary is a little bit difficult to see what's going on. So uh, basically, overhead, um, a couple of things for the drinking water quality management system. Um, the audits and accreditations for that are up this year. Um, so there's one in there. We had uh, hardware and software updates. That's uh, kind of what we live in now with the uh, software and uh, hardware. And then our locates had to uh, increase by a little bit, uh, service fees and things like that. And once you looked at the four systems, uh, Clifford, Harrison, Marston, and Mel Pines. Um, very similar to the wastewater system, <laughs> similar things. They're, they were all increased across the board uh, insurance, hydro, debt payment, um, servicing, and uh, the one that the other one was sampling as an increase for those three. Uh, the sampling increased due to Schedule 23 and Schedule 24 samples. Um, that's on three year cycle rotation. So those. Uh, those are organic and inorganic compounds that they test in the water and monitor to make sure that they're not increasing and increasing. So that's uh, well, that good all the increases. Questions? Go ahead, Councilor Gerson. Thank you. Um, I just had a question about the uh, search for water for uh, the water source for Harrison and Armstrong. Uh, I don't know how many years we've seen that on a budget now. If we were desperate for water, would we be able to find a lot faster? Or do you know what I'm saying? Like it just seems like we're spending a lot of money looking. I think it's the third year it's going on the budget, is it not? Yeah, that's a good question. And I wouldn't be able to answer that. Yeah. Well, we'll somebody else. Yeah. So well, but, maybe the treasure question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're very right. And I, I think uh Audrey told me we did it here. I think we have many discussions. Key, we're spending a lot of money, but we don't have a well. Um, again, this is such a highly regulated area. So not only do we have the uh, Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, we also have source water protection. You can see a big dollar item coming in for that. Um, and again, this a lot of this is driven by future development. Uh, it's not so much that we have Sorties of water, but all the projects on the board. Go ahead. Well, Harrison and Palmerston, we do need it. Um, yeah, it seems like uh, even a minor one like Winslow Pines, just from you know, a complicated project. I'm sure we spent much more time on the paperwork than we did in the actual well drilling and uh, like it's mining and service. But we thought that would happen fall of 23. Uh, so you're, you're not wrong. Uh, definitely, we spend a lot of money in engineering and approvals before we actually do the work. And of course, the cost of the work, I can't imagine 
Well, you were around when you did do the uh, Clifford well, and uh, you know, we hear from neighboring communities, it's probably you know, like three times as much as what that would cost. So, um, yeah, but again, the necessity uh, and a very expensive one too, and uh, that'll get reflected in that the water and very spider settings are starting. Can I go back and ask the uh, wastewater question? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Oh, clarifier. So we we put a new clarifier in um, so are they both going to be operating or is is it more an idea of the one is um, is there in case there's a problem with the issue? Uh, so eventually they will both be operating. Uh, the, the the one that we had was in need of repair, but we only had one. So we had to build another one in order to keep the treatment train running. And the way we had the design um, constructed was if in the event there's a when there is a future expansion, both paradigms will then be used. So this money on the, on the existing one, which is really the original one, yeah, um, it's it's just to bring it up to par so that it could be used. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead. Just something to add to the to your water question too. I, when I was doing the previous role, um, that we don't speak of anymore. Um, <laughs> and, um, one of the reasons why we were spending that money is because, as, as Bert said, we had to get the EA done so that the, the environmental assessment is done. And what the environmental assessment is done to is gives you the option of what can we do environmentally and through process wise to get more water. Now, the EA will probably show us along the line that we need a new well. So you have to do all that ahead of time. The other reason why we're putting money in each budget and doing it for the past couple of years was to get it shovel ready. So a lot of the times, if they do come out with an infrastructure grant and they say, you have to do it, but here's your time frame to complete it in, we knew we wouldn't be able to complete that time frame because the EA and everything else in engineering takes so long. So right. we're trying to get to that point where it, it technically is shovel ready. And if they came up with a new grant tomorrow, we could that's specific to wells, we could apply and, and be able to construct that well in the time frame. We knew we wouldn't be able to otherwise because of all the stuff you have to do ahead of time. So that's why you've seen it spread over. We try to spread it over the past couple of years. So it's not a huge hit at once. It's just we're doing getting this done and then getting this done. And then it's ready to go when we get to that point. Or if the aid does say you need a new well to increase your water capacity. Right. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Other questions? The mark. We we talked about your other uh, thought center uh, for hydrochemicals, wages, and insurance. I mean, once you get by those big four, it's uh, it's you know it's one of those things. I was wondering about the uh, water systems license renewals. Is that for uptake? Uh, how much water we can take? How much we can use? Is that what that's about? Um, I believe it's just the uh, system operation like for us to be able to operate this thing. That's exactly That's right. right. Yeah. Um, and if you remember, we got the internal audit, then we got the external. So the external is on like a three year cycle. So they do two years of what they call a surveillance audit, so you need that audit, you don't want to actually come out. And then every two years, they do the more in depth on and uh, it's one of those things that we need to have. Uh, and that's in addition to all the Ministry of Environment approvals and status of the Mark, uh, back when Walkerton was in effect and we came out of that era, all of our water operators have had to be trained and regulated. And we I know we've had this discussion about wastewater. Are we any closer to that in the reference or are we past that? Do you understand my question? Like, do the operators need to be licensed to operate systems? Yeah, they, yeah, sure. Like, it's, we're, uh, we're in that. Um, and um, as far as the quality management system, if that's now being introduced as well. But boy, for since Walker and wastewater uh, has you've had to have a, a license to be operating mm -hmm. the system. But it, it right now has been taping table for the quality management system to be introduced to wastewater. 
So instead of DWQMS, or the right acronym, you don't know what's there. Great. Uh, you hear uh, one of the things that I was quite impressed with when I came here was that the fact that uh, our water and wastewater operators, as well as some of our public work staff, have been cross training and getting cross licenses. So uh, that's a real feather in the cap for these managers here that uh, are managing our systems. Okay, any other questions for Mark? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, or are you uh, on the on the departmental? Yes, uh, and you basically have covered that already. That okay. uh, the OMPF and actually, in fact, the mayor's golf can get too, but it's a great even <laughs> to do that. So again, the update is for up uh, forty-seven thousand six hundred. So that's the good news. Um, and again, I'll emphasize we will be making changes if we find anything. Uh, we did get some not so good news uh, this week is we uh, have uh, an adverse result of the tax appeal and that's going to be about a 1.35 percent hit for ninety thousand dollars so we'll have to incorporate that because i know uh on united have got an estimate for tax write-offs and we're way too low <laughs> as we found out because uh, we will be others uh, in general, we don't have that many outstanding appeals because again, we're in the ninth or tenth year of the four year cycle, so it's not too many regular appeals, but we do have a, a couple of large things out there. So, not and we'll make any other things based on your feedback or anything else that we uncover in the next couple of weeks. So, would you put that under democracy, having the right to challenge? It's definitely part of the legislation. Yes, every taxpayer has the right to appeal the assessments and supplements too. Any questions uh, for, for Gord in reference to that? All right, then moving right along. CEO Joe Turton. Thank you, Mayor Turton and members of council. That does conclude our presentation for today. I know that was a heck of a lot of information. And uh, we would certainly appreciate the questions and comments that were made by the members of council. As you know, earlier in the presentation, we looked at uh, the 6.5 percent tax levy. Uh, that's in you know, addition to or that's before we get into the whole capital situation, which we'll talk about the next meeting. Um, so we kind of want to get some feedback from members of council about whether they feel comfortable with what we presented, whether they'd like us to go back and uh, look at some amendments or updates, and uh, so we leave that with uh, with Mr. Mayor to uh, pose that question to you. Certainly, um, I really appreciate, and you know the council does as well. Uh, having this document a week in advance has been really, it's been great to the point where we've all looked at it and have proposed questions. Back to you, Greg, and our staff. I mean, when we uh, when we look at this, all the information's here. I mean, so it's it's been very well prepared by our staff. And just want to help on behalf of the council to thank every one of you guys, you guys, for for doing that, presenting it. I mean, with all of our uh, new structure and reference to our strategic plan, all our goals and objectives, it's it's really nice to see. We talked about uh, shovel ready stuff. That's one of our strengths in, in Minto over the years uh, with our grant writing ability and having shovel ready projects ready to go. That's, that's so important. And I think I heard uh, uh, Mike talk about succession planning. And that's, that's another thing that's so important to us. So for us to sit here and listen to you folks and how prepared and how well this has been prepared and put together for us, I mean, it's, it's terrific. Thank you. And so let's uh, let's discuss the six point five or six point three. What was that? Nothing. Six point five. Any uh, any discussion in reference to this? Is this something that uh, uh, we're happy with, or should we? What is the number we're looking for? I understand uh, that uh, the the uh, 
capital budget is coming. Um, and if Lord, if you want to, if you don't mind just taking a second and explaining to us what how the 6.3 and how our capital roll together and next steps, please. So um, the last couple of years, and that's the way we're doing it this year because we're well into the process. The capital will not like to have any effect on the 6.5 because we're rolling all capital expenditures to reserve funds. Um, we may look at that again uh, for the 26 budget for up for 25. That's the system we have. So it won't have any direct effect. If we do say increase some of the capital expenditures, we're going to be bringing a lot of options for you. Um, that would increase transfers to reserves from the uh, operating budget that we're looking here. So it could have an indirect effect. Um, but that's where we're at. We're going to be looking at our, our capital priorities. Um, we'll, we'll pass the budget hopefully in December. And as you know, we have um, six outstanding grant applications. So I'm pretty sure we will be amending whatever our estimates are um, based on uh, the results of those. Uh, we're, we've got a uh, connecting link grant that's what we're going to submit next week. And then that will conclude all the capital grant applications for this round. And uh, as you may recall, so many of them are announced at any moment. And uh, we'll stay into the due dates now. But, We'll present them. Um, some of them, if we're optimistic, we'll say, yeah, we, we think we'll get it. And uh, a couple of the projects will probably not go ahead if we don't get the funding, but our big one will go ahead regardless of the funding uh, is how we uh, actually pay for it, how much that we take on. So, um, yeah, but again, you can uh, think that 6.5, whatever is is desired by council is how we get there. Sure. So when we look at the 6.5, the only way that would alter that is reserves. Basically, and any new information and unfortunately the new information that we got from there is going to their own direction right now. Except for that. And when we look at uh, the three big projects, the the big one is the Palmerston Main Street and the other uh, two are the, the two wells that we're talking about, correct? Yes, that's correct. And we pretty much know 99% of the promise in the is 2026. The wells, as indicated, depending on how the paper worked and the other sources of funding, could be 26, uh, could be 27, uh, very unlikely it's going to be 25. And so in 2025, we will not likely borrow a whole lot of money unless I would prefer not to borrow because we know we do have to borrow. But again, the council has other priorities. I mean, let's be bring forward and they say that's got to go in 25. We may have to reconsider our position on that. So I'm going to be the first one to offer good luck on those grants, all, all six of them, or six of them with the connecting ones. That's just six. Six. Well, good luck with that. So if, if uh, I mean, if you are in and around Mr. Uh, our MVP, Mr. Ray, uh, not sure how we can influence some of these. I have, I have no idea whether we can or whether we can't, but what are your thoughts on this 6.3? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Anderson. Um, not a thought per se yet, just a question, uh, Terry. In regards to the need for water, that was a pressing, pressing concern, was looking at water. We were limiting the number of building permits we were giving out, but building seems to have slowed a bit, even though I know there's lots of plans out there and permits, but is the pressure the same as it was? When do we anticipate? Uh, so the, uh, we have, not limited recently uh, issuing building permits for any development, but um, as mentioned, if all the projects that are in the work, so our draft approved, um, but not moving forward at this moment, pulled the trigger, we would be overcommitted with our Harrison water allocation. So that's if everybody built tomorrow, we would not have sufficient amount of water. So it depends on 
the speed of these developments. Okay, so when well, the percentage, what would the deficit be per se in our availability to provide it? And what's the chart? How long would it take to build a well? Uh, to build a well, uh, I'm not the expert, probably a year and a half. Okay, that's um, what I'm thinking. It's not a two month project. No, uh, but as for how many were short, it's like 17 units. So okay. it's not drastic by any means at this point. Um, but with the county's growth forecast, we're going to run out of water before they anticipated we would run out of water. Okay. All right. So there's some crack to that. Sorry. Go ahead. The other thing to just remember with that is the way that um, reserve capacity unit is calculated, it, it's done with the, it's called firm capacity. So you take your highest producing well, and you have to assume that it's out of service. And then the rest of the wells supply the rest of the community with the water they need. So that's just an engineering practice. So you would, wouldn't actually physically run out of water. Okay. All right. So I, I, I get So others would step in and fill the gap, but according yeah. to the numbers as they look, it would look like it was out of. Okay. All right. That makes some sense. Sort of. I'm not an engineer at all, but uh, okay. I get from Robin Peter to get paid Paul. Okay. Thank you. So just to extend that. Thank you. Any others? Sorry. No. Palmerston. I mean, we're talking about a well there as well. Is it under uh, a similar situation, gentlemen? Uh, <laughs> just off the off the hand, I couldn't tell you the exact reserve calculations there, but the reserve numbers are a little better in water. Uh, in, in the county's growth forecast has a uh, sufficient water capacity to, I believe, off the top of my head, 2036. Um, since that, again, we've got more subdivision applications that are happening, expansions to existing ones. So, uh, definitely not as same, same amount of pressure as Harrison, but again, we want to kind of get ready so we don't have that development shutdown where we can't allow anybody to build because we don't have the calculated capacity. I guess that's one of the good things about not borrowing, paying off some of our debts, and uh, having the ability. I know I've heard you say before, Lord, that uh, we have lots of room for borrowing. But again, we certainly don't want to put ourselves in jeopardy because there's always something that comes up. Exactly. Um, yeah, so we haven't borrowed since the fall of 21, which was for some 22 projects. Uh, our fire being the largest and then a white scroll and then I think we pissed off the top line. Uh, again, it's kind of like your personal credit card limit. Uh, you may have 30,000 there, but maybe you don't want to go over 15. And uh, yeah, we have on paper more than adequate uh, debt capacity, but that would certainly impinge a lot of our other programs. It's just like the federal and the provincial governments only we can't run a deficit. So um yeah, we want to be cautious, but we, we know we're gonna go up in the next round of appointment for sure. Well sorry to belabor this, but are there grants available for wells? Or is that part of our so high wastewater fees? Yeah. So we were fortunate to get uh under the ICIP mainstream, we got a little over 200,000 in funding for the Mental Pines well. But again, that's a quite a small project, even for Minto. So, yes, we're happy to get some funding. But I have not heard anything about a continuation of the ICIP program. Uh, we have the new housing related funding. Um, but as far as the general infrastructure program or that uh, for those things, not at the moment, but uh, and as, as Mark and Terry have pointed out, you can't build houses without having the water and wastewater capacity. So maybe there will be in the future and our strategy of being shovel ready will, will help. Deputy Mayor Anderson, go ahead. So not to belabor a point, but I'm going to go back to housing again. So I know we have the county projection of housing, but there seems to be a general sort of slowdown on actual housing being built for a number of reasons. I think interest rate being one and people waiting for the bubble to break. 
and fall to the ground and what are the houses actually really going to be worth and can a builder then build the house and sell it for enough money to recoup this cost so I think there's going to be a big adjustment here I don't know how long it's going to take I wish I had a crystal ball but I don't um you have that sense too like I know the county has numbers but there seems to be a decline uh, so yeah the county does have road forecast numbers for us and up until last year we drastically exceeded them mm -hmm. uh, so now we're, we're below what what the forecast is um I'm anticipating um probably about mid next year we should be at their levels and probably increasing from there um, as interest rates uh, drops. Uh, we have seen a reduction in the sale cost of, of housing. Mm -hmm. um, when I say builders are losing money, I don't think they are. I think there's still a healthy margin built into the cost of a new house. They've been used to hefty margins for a bit, and that's they're not willing to let that go, unfortunately. Yes, um, I agree with that. So, I think that's part of the problem, the price, because we thought I can't get anybody anywhere to, to give me a price attached to affordable housing. It's just, it's affordable housing. Affordable to whom? Yeah. And how? And where? With the energy mix? It's just, it's a euphemism. We yeah. shout around all over the place, but nobody even put a dollar figure on it. Yeah. So I'm just wondering how much of an impact that has on our actual building. What we need is truly affordable housing, which isn't what I see happening, but... And I cannot disagree with that. Yeah. yeah. But okay. No best solution either. No. <laughs> if only. Thank you. Councilor Bonavitz, go ahead. Yes, Director. And then maybe you can answer this uh, question. But where is the count of the county uh, uh, on their budget process uh, on their timelines? We're just starting. Starting. And they could affect our bottom line as well in regards to not directly, but they do affect us as taxpayers. Uh, so even if uh, the county middle comes up with a certain percentage, if the county goes higher or lower than ours, so say we, we end up at five and the county comes up at six, uh, we already got the uh, school board rates and they're holding flat, which will help. Um, so it does affect our overall taxpayers, but not directly our revenue. Okay. Councillor Gunson, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Turker. Um, so last year in the in our budget uh, package, it had a page that showed budget percentage of four point five three nine percent, and then the tax bill impact, yes. and then the number of what for each household. Yeah, do you have those numbers in front of you? Because I think that's mm -hmm. the realistic look for the taxpayers. What's it gonna? Yeah, what's uh, gonna be? Me? I constantly take that slide out because I don't <laughs> have any information, <laughs> and it would be relatively meaningless. Uh, it depends on where you get like the actual assessment role. Um, I know there there aren't uh, reassessments on existing. Uh, I think there's some information on on growth. Uh, but also we had to incorporate all these other appeals in that too. And uh, again, those uh, education rates just came out uh, yesterday, I think. Yeah, so we didn't have that more print of that. So now I could give you the education course. And well, we're going to see that slide you mentioned, right? Like it'll yeah, be yeah. It would be, not, again, I don't have the assessment information. And I don't have the county rate, so there'd be a lot of TBAs. Yeah, so <laughs> but we will have that at some point, and uh, that would be nice to have safer in the December meeting. Thank you. Other comments? Sorry, go ahead, Councilor Jersey. Sorry, I just put my hand up and looked away. I'm sorry. Um, uh, just before I uh, came out this afternoon. I saw a, I don't know what you call it now. It's not a tweet anymore. It's an X now. I don't know what you call it. But anyways, uh, Wellington Advertiser is reporting on PP for the county, and that that is going to be a big increase in the county budget. So they'll all be sharing in that as well. I too would be interested in the uh, $250,000 assessment of the house or whatever, and what this 6.5 
who meet for our tax bill and what the difference will be. But I guess we can't get it. We can't. If it's not available yet, we can't get it. Yeah, I, I could get like an estimate based on the 24 figures. I could give you that. And, um, actually, I could probably email that or see more. <laughs> That one would be hard to figure out. Just kind of just kind of wheel up, I guess. And maybe 250 is the right number. I can't remember what's big. You're not far off because you can delay in the reassessment. That figure is not changing. Uh, I'll consult with the county to see if they have any figures because normally they give uh, an average for the single family dwelling. In the county by municipality. Uh, so I'll see if they have that. But I know I could do it on point four because we know what that is. Yeah. Other comments? I mean, go ahead, Debbie. Uh, Just to refresh my family member, what was our rate increase last year and what was the impact for household? Because I didn't go looking that up. I should have probably. Anybody else got that comment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want me to say what it says for the operating budget that we did last year? Because I got a slide in front of me. Yeah, I think so. Like 4.39. 4.39. Yeah. Overall tax bill impact was 1.74. So for an average residential home of 250000 $23.33. There you go. But that, that's only the operating that's budget. Assessed. That's it. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. I thought it was around there, but I couldn't remember the chart. Well, what's, what's our preference? I mean, 6.3 sounds like a big number. But I mean, when you look at some of the big things that we're talking about, insurance, uh, wages, hydro, and, and a few other things. Uh, CAO, are you going uh, to stay talking <laughs> You're coming towards the mic there. And I know that you know, after talking with uh, uh, Gordon Gray, that 6.3 uh, is, is, is flexible. And I believe that's 6.5. 6.5, pardon me. Thank you. So are we happy with six? Uh, are we happy with where it's at? So what are you thinking, you guys and gals? Go ahead. Councillor Zimmerman? No, I'm, I personally think that I have faith in the top shots that they've done a very good job of crunching numbers here. And I'm very comfortable if they tell me that that's what it's going to take to run this town, and I'm okay with that. And yes, it's a modest increase, but if we start Spending our reserves just to lower that. What, what's that going to do for the next year's coming? Uh, it's just going to delay the inevitable, or at some point, it'll be a massive increase. So, uh, I think they've done a great job. That's where I'm I agree with exactly what you said. Um, I, th I think the, every year they skinny this as much as they can, get to win what. We can certainly hit the kind of percentages off and say get to five percent or whatever. But another year from now, we're gonna to have to find that money because obviously we need that money to expand it. So instead of six point five next time we come here, it could be eight point five to bring those two percent of injury back. So I'm 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 very cheap. I have some faith in that. We've got to where we want to go, and uh, I'm sure the people I've talked to amongst each other at your senior meetings and found uh, well, it's save money as best you can and spend the money as best you can. So I, I'm happy with six months. Others? Deputy Mayor Anderson? So I have to commend you on this document, although I got to tell you, this is pretty interesting reading. So I tried to wrap my mind around all of it. There's a lot of detail in it, which I'm thrilled to see because it zooms in with the way I think. Where are we at? What have we spent? What have we not? And as the two previous counselors just spoke, said, you got to pay the piper at some point in time. So delaying the inevitable ends up with an increase that's totally unacceptable to both us and the community. 
everything we do is costing more money, whether it's buying groceries, taking your kids to sporting events, going to see a movie, paying for your hydro bill, it, it's all going to go up. I can't say I'm happy about a 6.5% increase, but I think it's what we need to do. It'll be interesting to see what the council or the county does to our rate though. Thanks, Stephanie Mayor. I had a lot of help for Well, it was, so, it was a distressive document. Yeah. Councilor Dirksen? Uh, so I also come to have this six and a half. Um, I guess the one thing that I disagree with is I think, in spite of our best efforts, staff and council, that we may sometimes have, sometime still have a ridiculous increase oh. in the horizon. But uh, hopefully, making this one six and a half instead of three, four and a half, for instance, will help medi mitigate that sometimes. But we don't know what's in the future, and we know that we have things that we need to do that are very expensive. Like that well is a perfect example. It drives me crazy, but it's a perfect example of spending a lot of money for, to find some water. Oh, next, please make the same comments. Um, can't take away hydro, can't take away our employees, right? So those are the, we talked about big for the increases, so we can't take that stuff away. So we're, you know, like, I'm pretty happy to six point five percent. It's not like there's every just request in there from the staff. So I tend to agree with everybody. The staff has done a great job. And other than the inevitable, like cost of living, the insurance and right, hydro, there's nothing we can do about that anyway. So, yeah. Okay, so what? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I mean, realistically, five years ago, uh, when what was the price of the uh, mainstream volunteer? What's the price today? You can't tell you the problem so much. You can't tell you uh, Clifford. And yeah. Clifford is relatively small. That was $4.1 million uh, to do that. And uh, a small part, like maybe 400000 was the part south of Mill Street because um, there's no services there. Uh, from there on, and, and that was a big project. I think that's the biggest project Minto had done to that point. And this will definitely be um, the value of um, the joint application for the roads and the services uh, for both the county and Minto share is at 20 million right now. So, well, we'll actually see it's, it's going to be a huge project. We hope it doesn't come in near that high, but still. Um, and again, you look at our neighbors, and you know whether it's uh, an arena or uh, a wastewater treatment plant, uh, the prices are just astonishing. And uh, as I've said many times, the inflation rate for municipalities is running much higher than this for the average consumer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I could have a resolution moved by Councilor Council and second by Councilor Kelly for any of the whole convenes and director council. All in favor of that motion. That's carried. Um, we're now into adjournment. Um, do we? So uh, I, I'm in full agreement with what's been said here 6.5%. 6. 6. And I certainly say again, I, I appreciate uh, on behalf of Council and everybody here has said the same thing. A great report is, and thank you for doing your homework, uh, coming to the table, and um, we all agree. We have consensus here. So we're going to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Fawcett, second by Councillor Zimmerman, and Councillor Townsend to adjourn. We again, all in your own favor. That's carried. We're adjourned.